You look good. So look, I'm here for two reasons only. Number one, top. Number one, top reason is Ms. Jennifer Yo said, you know, come down here and teach this today, but I'm firing you on the spot, right? So I'm here. The other reason is many years ago, I made a commitment to myself that I was going to be willing to put myself or let myself be put in uncomfortable situations. In other words, this is kind of uncomfortable for me. It always has been. Getting in front of even one, two, ten, however many, face to face with a client I've never met, that kind of thing. Not doing something to put me in trouble, whatever. But put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, that, we open that. Let me see. Not, it really is a PDF. Uh, I, I'm not good with the <laughs> that. Great sleep. Uh, we'll get you hooked up. Yeah, I don't need so which one is that. it? No, well, I don't need anything right now. Oh, nothing now? Out of seat. You sure? Yes, but it's got to be right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look, I really have uh, no see for a really, really long time. But let's get this my real estate experience out of the way. Let's just knock it right out, be done with it. Uh, who, who in this room was born 1987 or after? Anybody? Anybody? 1987? 87? 77. Anybody else? Any, any? I'm old. Yeah, okay, I'm going to turn this dumb thing. See, this This is the power button. And that's the power going off. That's going off. That's <laughs> going off. Because, let's do it one more time. Because when I'm in front of you, I'm in front of you. If I'm at a client's house, I am in front of them, right? I don't need this. So okay, let's get back. Ready? Hey, how long? How long are we to do this till we get tired of it? Yep. Guess what? I didn't even turn on my watch today, so I don't even know what time it is. I began my real estate sales career in uh, January of 1987. Okay, so that's when I got my real estate sales license. Uh, became a broker in 1994. So all I've ever done since January of 1987 is real estate sales. That's all I've done. Commission sales only. And that's it, right? That's all I've ever done. That's all I want to do because you really can be an independent person and make a lot of money all at the same time. Right, so that's all I've ever done. So, have you sold any real estate? Uh, Steve's only heard stories. So, when I was a younger man, right now I quit counting several years ago, but I've I closed well over 2,000 close transactions, and I don't know where I'm at because I quit counting because it wasn't important. As I've become a more mature man, my focus has shifted on what's important to me, not so much the income total as the quality of my time, right? Because being a mature guy, kind of on the time clock here, you young folks, you know, eh, me in 20 years from now, I'll be the assisted living, okay? So but that's kind of the way it is. So I have I've changed my focus a little bit, but just know I've done this a lot. I've run into a lot of different things, and I'm going to tell you over time, and maybe nobody likes to hear it, but the two things, two things, sales agents, and I'm going to say sales agents, because how many, how many in here that are sales agents actually think you're a sales agent, or are you a real four? Which one is it? Or are you both? Which one is it? I am a sales agent. You know what? And I'm going to say something in this. Uh, hopefully this will chat Steve a little bit, Rob a little bit, and our new Salt Lake board uh, from our company a little bit. 
So the big difference between a sales agent and a real tour is a thousand bucks a year. That's it. It's a thousand bucks a year. You don't pay your thousand bucks, you're not a real tour. But if you renew your license, you're always a sales agent. So don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing our I'm not dissing the board or the association. Or Just there's a difference. Are you in this business to make sales? Or are you in this business for some other reason? Me, it's always been about the sales and it's been about the income. I like people and I like to help and I want them to have a good outcome, but it's, it's about the income. Because in my family, it's always been me providing the income, right? I don't have anybody else. My wife and I, Connie, started working with me years. You know, most of our kids were basically gone and out of the house. So we made an agreement. I would work. I would make income and she would stay home and be that mom. So when our kids walked in the door from school, mom was there, right? So that was our deal. So only income. If you're able to be in a sales job and have someone else with, you know, supporting income that does something else, that's all, right? Good. So here's the two things that so our sales people and I've been a broker a long time too. I've managed a lot of agents. I'm able to manage a lot of agents, if you'll let me. Uh, is this time and communication? Time and communication. Realtors don't know how to manage their time, they don't know how to use their time. They just don't. I'm sorry, they just don't or won't. The other thing is communication. People don't know how to communicate. When I say communication, it's you and I having a conversation. Having conversations with people. Okay? Texting does not count as real communication. It doesn't. Sending an email doesn't count as real communication. You can fight me on this if you want, but it does not. The more you're able to face-to-face -face and have a conversation, a sales conversation with people, asking sales questions in a conversational manner, using the right words and knowing what to say in any given situation, then you're really going to do well. So let's go back on my career a little bit. There was at one point in time... <clears throat> I ran a 50 sale a year business out of the trunk of my car with a pager. With a pager. I didn't have all, all, I love the tech, but it's a tool, right? It's not the be all, do all, it's a tool. I love the tech. 50 sales a year minimum out of the trunk of my car with a pager. Then I got a brick cell phone and my life changed forever, right? So it's this thing that beats the head. If somebody wants to talk to you, if somebody wants to talk to you, they call you on this uh, on this phone number, and your pager beeps, right? And then the original old old pager it beeps, and then you got to go find the telephone, and then you call a number, and they've left you a, a message. Then it got a fancy pager, and it actually said their phone number. And I still had to go find a phone call, right? On the telephone. Took them in. Now you got a, a brick phone. It's awesome. So what I'm saying is, how did I do all that? I talk to a lot of people. And I meet a lot of people. And I morphed my business into not just meeting new people, but staying with, in touch with all the people I know. Connie and I do 90 plus percent business is strictly referral business. I don't prospect as hard as I did at one point in time. And prospecting to me is this. It's going out and finding business. There's really only three ways to do it in this industry. You can do the tried and true method of waiting. Waiting till your brother decides to sell his house or waiting till grandma has to move out, waiting for the business. You can uh, you can pay for it. And when I mean pay for it, you can hire realtor.com. I don't even know if they still have Tiger Leads. Tiger Leads, 
Zillow, all those, and they can give you what you would call a lead, right? A lead. You can do that. You can advertise like crazy. You can have Facebook ads. You can have your Instagram. You can do all that stuff. And I say, yeah, if you want to, great, go for it. Do it. Because everybody ought to be, in my book, you need to be a well-rounded individual and know how to get business more than one way, right? Be a well-rounded individual. But for me, at this stage of my career, I get it, uh, I get it the easy way because I like to pick my apples from here. I don't like to climb the ladder and pick them all from the top. I keep climbing and climbing and fighting off somebody else that's trying to get that same apple, which is kind of what we do here, right? But good way to do business. So in this business, you need to learn how to talk to people. You need to start your business just like building a house. You're going to dig a hole and put your footings in your foundation. Your foundation is your database, or you can call it sphere of influence, gold list, whatever you want to call it, right? You can call it any of those things. You've got to have it. Start throwing people in there. I don't know anybody. I just got in the business. I just moved here. I do Okay, so I'm going to help you with that today when we get to the the reason, the, the original thing that Jen said that this class ought to be, she said, reinventing yourself in real estate. I said, that's stupid. Nobody will come, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody will come. So I said, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Magic words. And maybe somebody will come just for curiosity. <laughs> so start working on your database. Start. Here's the way you do it. Here's the way you do it. If you haven't done it, how many people have an actual database of people right now that you could call on the telephone when you walk out that door and say, hey, and it's in writing somewhere, somehow. Awesome. Awesome. How many people? Not you. Yeah. You put your hand up. <laughs> I know you have a database, but I don't even want to know how many. Uh, how many people in your? Uh, yeah, 4,300. Okay, I don't have that many. I could. Right. See, okay. So he just went way down a road. <laughs> he went way down. Now he's leaving. Now he's leaving. He goes way down a road and then he leaves. Yeah, I don't have that many people, right, anymore. You just have this giant database, but we we work on about 800 people or so all the time. Throw up, putting them in, throwing them out. So here's, so just do that first. Keep, it's, a, it's a work in progress always. People say, oh, it takes too long, it's too hard. Uh, well, do that while you're doing all this other stuff too. Get, you know, get good at it. But here's what happens when you get to be my age, it's really when it pays off. Or even a couple of years from now, it really pays off. How many people have past clients in the room? Anybody have a past client? When was the last time you talked to any of your past clients on the telephone and had a chat with them? How long? Wait, wait, did they close yesterday? Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. So, you know, those people are awesome, but it doesn't have to be those people this week. Awesome. So, here's why it works out in the end. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm just saying, do it. Just do it, please. Please. If your plan is to have a long term career in this business, not everything's nothing. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It doesn't. I picked this thing up this morning just to see. So I got on Instagram, right? And I just started going down. Oh, click here, learn more about my cold email system. Oh, click here, learn more. The system that got me 82,000 more, more, more over a system. Click here, you know, buy this for me, buy this. I, I, I. And you do that, and, you, and it almost makes you a little frustrated when you go through and you go, oh, maybe I'm not doing it. Doing it. They're not doing it right. They're doing it right as far as trying to make money from you, but uh, you know the really the really big hitters in this business and long term, they're not those guys. They maybe a couple of them did really well for a few years, then they flame out. So do that now. Let me tell you why it works. Why it, why it pays off in the long term. So right now today, 
That's why I walked in the door right at the last minute is because uh, Davis County Realtors have a tour every Wednesday at tour, okay, property tour. Salt Lake's trying to get on board with it. Weaver County started to do a little better with it. Salt Lake, you know, and in the olden days, when I was a brand new realtor, they had this awesome bus tour for Salt Lake Ford. It'd be like four or five big old buses and every, all the realtors would go and you'd get on and buses would go around the neighborhood. That was awesome. But not so much anymore. So the reason I was late was because we had, Connie and I had a home on tour this morning and Connie made me go to the meeting because she didn't want to get up and talk about the, didn't want to get up and talk about the, the home a little bit before tour. And the reason I bring that up is this, that home is from one of our past clients. So this gentleman, we, uh, we were referred to him years ago by somebody else, 10 years ago to be exact. A little condo on Redwood Road, Salt Lake. We helped him sell that condo. Then we helped him buy this house that he's living in right now. And he was older gentleman, single, gonna probably gonna live there forever, probably die there, right? That was his plan, die in the house. So he, you know, we keep in touch all the time. This, the kind of relationships you want to have with past clients and stuff is this. He used to go on trips. He'd go to Peru. He'd bring me something back, right? Bring me something back. I didn't call him you know, ask him to, but they stay in touch. We stay in touch. Doesn't have to be fancy, make up your own system on how you stay in touch, but stay in touch. And all of our people know, I start asking them for new business right after I meet them. I do, right? They sign their buyer broker agreement. I say, hey, well, who else do you know right now? Start asking, why not? Ask the question. You don't have to be weird about it. But you know, Right, you don't have to do that. So, ten years goes by. Right, ten years goes by. Just out of the blue, we hadn't actually talked to him for quite a while. Out of the blue, he calls up and says, "He calls Connie. Can you believe it? He didn't call me. He called Connie. Right? They all do that. They call her first and make me do the work." He calls Connie on the phone. Hey, can you guys come over? I want. I'm ready to sell my house. Can you come over? Like, sure. When do you want to do it? Well, come today. So that's how hard it is when you have those kind of clients. We went today, signed the paperwork that day and got it on the market. Now he has some health issues and needs to move into an assisted living, right? Oh, by the way, I have a SRES designation, senior real estate specialist. I know a lot of people living in different senior living places. Is there any business there? Huh, huh, oh. Go ahead and leave a message, but if for a fast response, send me a text. Who does that? How many in this room have that as your voicemail message? Yeah. Come on, be honest. Be honest. Please leave me a message, uh, a message, but for a fast response, send me a text. Shut up. I'm not ever calling texting you, and I'm not calling you back either. What? Come on. Talk to people. So I know a lot of people there. So there you go. There's one referral. I'm going to talk. I'm going to mention three plants that we have right now, right this very minute. So we got that guy, right? Homes on tour. I hope somebody has a buyer for it. We have a listing up in Ogden. Slow sell. It's on Harrison Boulevard. Biz, one of the busiest streets in Ogden. It's an awesome property, but it's a busy street. So we're struggling. Probably going to have to just lower the price. It's but this plant, that seller, oh, by the way, we are on number nine or 10 transaction with this plant. <laughs> nine or 10 transaction with this plant. Over years, over time, not all in the same year. I'll on the phone, hey, I, I wanna sell this property. Okay, when do you want us to come? Well, come right now. Okay, bring a sign, right? Or I need to go buy this property. I need to buy an investment. I need to do this. That's eight to 10 times. That, that's client number two we're working with right now. And we have a buyer client, right? We have people in our database. We really never sold them a home ever, ever. So we have these buyer clients right now. This lady calls up Connie. Hey, you know, I, I need to go help my sister. 
they need to buy this house, they need to buy a house and, you know, we trust you, we know you, we love you, we know what you do and how long you've been doing it, blah, blah, blah. So call up my sister. So they've already called sister, said these people are going to call you and you're going to help, they're going to help you and you're going to work with them. So we had them come to our office, come in the office, okay, I need to sign this buyer broker agreement because you're going to work with us and we're going to get paid. Okay, and they sign it. And how hard is it for you to get a buyer broker agreement signed sometimes, right? Like pulling teeth with some people. I don't work with those people. I just walk away. I say next, okay. next. So why do you want to have database? Why do you want to have your sphere of influence, your gold list, your whatever? That's why. Because it doesn't have to take years and years to do it. You just start keep working, working, working it. Then you learn how to do the other things. So you always have income coming in. Here's the other secret to the real estate sales business. Your business is not market driven, period. Can I say that again? Your business is not market driven. It's not all about you and the activities that you do each and every day. You can adapt to market conditions with your business, what you're doing, but it's never about the market, ever. So 1987, I start this wonderful career. So what was interest rates in 1987? Oh, they had gone down. They were like 14%, right? They had gone down. Then they went to 12. But in that point in time, there was a lot. I'm talking a lot of repossessed homes, HUD homes, bank-owned homes. And in those days, because we didn't have this awesome here, uh, they put them in the, paper, in the newspaper on Saturday, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think sometimes. You open up Deseret News, Salt Lake Tribune, and there'd be like three full pages, little tiny print of all these homes for sale. Right, all these homes, little tiny print. And nobody was buying, right? Not that many buyers, people couldn't qualify, people were, you know, underwater, <clears throat> all kinds of. Them. And so pages of it. If you wanted to be a listing agent, it was awesome. You could get pretty much many listings as you wanted. A lot of them didn't never sold, but oh well. So that's the market I entered this business in. Over time, I met some more mature, seasoned people, and there was a couple of them that it didn't seem to matter. It didn't seem to matter. I had a couple, one was kind of like a mentor, this older lady, right? Her name was Dorothy Cohagen. She's passed away now several years ago. She was awesome, Dorothy Cohagen. She's the one that really got me going on the having database and people that know you, love you, trust you, right? So, and the other was this broker I had. This dumb guy, he made like, this was in 1987. He was making 300 grand a year. Just think what kind of, what's a 300 grand a year dollar equal to nowadays? That probably about the same because everything's so expensive, right? <laughs> but he was making 300 grand a year every year, whether he needed to or not, and the market was horrible. And he drove a big white Cadillac, right? He drove a big white Cadillac. And he traded it in every year for a brand new big white Cadillac, right? And you never want to ride with him because he drove about 100 miles an hour everywhere. But I'm going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How, what are these, how are they doing that, right? This market's horrible. And everybody keeps telling me the market's horrible. It's horrible. You know, oh, get out of the business. But I just started paying attention and they started kind of giving me the what to do. It's all about talking to people. It still is. It's all about talking to people. How many people are you going to talk to today? How many? One, two, three, five, ten. Talk to people. You can count, you can count this if you want, but you're not really going to ever be as good as me. Because if you and I have the same listing appointment with the same client and that client doesn't know either of us, I'm going to get that listing every single time because I know what to say. 
when to say it. I use the same listing appointment every single time with every client, whether it's a hundred thousand dollar trailer house or it's a million dollar whatever. Up here, it's same listing presentation, same people. Doesn't matter to me if you're, you know, the fan, the best attorney out there, and I want all these get, or you're a surgeon, or it's the same thing. Everybody, give them your A game. Know what you're gonna say. Be professional, be smart, right? I'm gonna tell you all about the all the paperwork, all the contract, everything you need to know inside and out for your toolbox, right? But I know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna here's how here's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna have a listing appointment. I'm gonna get there a little early. I'm gonna sit in my car and I'm gonna rock out for a minute, right? But I'm gonna look at my stuff so I can remember. And then I'm gonna hit that door. And when the clock hits the thing, I know the old early is on time, on time is late. I know I've heard it. When the clock hits that, that spot right there, I'm going to hit the doorbell. They're going to open the door. I'm going to say, my name is Terry Dorsey. I have an appointment for 4 o'clock. May I step in? And they always let me step in. That's how, it's, that's how you start, right? But you, And I don't care what kind of listing presentation you do, buyer presentation, whatever. Learn it. Practice it, remember it, be good at it, make it natural. And then when they start asking weird questions, it doesn't throw you off your game because you are you have it all internalized and it's good. So what time is it? I don't, my watch isn't on. What time is it? What time are we supposed to quit? 1040? 10.40? 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> Get Daddy, get Daddy back in here. I am. Well, I'm gonna go to talk about lunch here in a bit, but not that I'm. Remember, I am the sole provider in my family for the income <laughs> and the material. Thanks, guys. So let's go back. Let's go back. Time, 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 time. How many, how many people use a business plan? Okay, how many people use a business plan in here right now? Have their 2024 business plan done, set, ready to go. This is what I want to do for next year. I want to make this much money. I want to do this. This is how much money I made last year. You know, these are the things I have to do to make this happen, right? How many have a one month plan? One week, you have a one month? Awesome, one week, one week. All right, so, so I brought you some, okay, most of the stuff I'm going to share with you as far as the planning things and that kind of stuff, it's all from Mike Ferry. I don't care if you don't like him or not. There's all kind of coaching places, all kind of, I'm, and I'm a big proponent of coaching. I really am. And I don't really care who you use. As long as you use somebody good that works for you, right? That works for you. So I'm an old, I'm a, I'm a, was a long time Mike Ferry coaching client. Okay. I was a premier coaching client. I paid him a thousand bucks a month for years. Okay. A thousand bucks a month. Why? Because I wanted to keep, I needed it. I needed that help and I needed that accountability. I needed everything that that brought to the table. So the reason I say that is the planning stuff. I have a 2024 12 month business plan. That you guys can have a uh, one week plan, one month plan, all, and you know what you want to do. The, so here's when you really should do your business planning, kids. This is it. You do it in September or October, your 2024 plan. So part of your plan includes those last two months of the year. So you're really going to kick it November and December. So your year starts out awesome, right? And if you're only planning on doing a couple of deals next year, right? Uh, I, I don't care. I'll probably do a couple of transactions. We'll do them in January and take the rest of the year off, right? Do that. So uh, you can use that. You don't, there's tons of business plans out there, right? That you can use and get something worse. But this is one I use. You recap what you did last year. Let's say, oh, I've only been in business six months. That's okay. Use the income you. That you made from last year, however, it came, you know, just crack it, right? Don't, don't excuse your, uh, have an excuse for not doing it, right? 
Oh, I wasn't in real estate law. I can't really. Do it. So it's basically what I do last year. How I how I get my business? Where did it all come from? Right? What's my average sales commission? Does anybody in here know their average sales commission? If you went back over the last year, what's your average sales commission? Anybody? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right, well, good. So you can use that. It's like your standard for next year. Okay, well, my average was this. Do I have this much money? This was the commission I made. And I got to do these things. Real estate still is and always will be. I'm sorry. I know we've had a lot of instruction about feelings and relationships. And it's all important and it's all good. And we need it, right? I need it. But real, the real estate sales game, and ask, ask that guy, uh, it's about the numbers. It's always about the numbers. How many people I need to talk to to get an appointment? How many appointments do I need to go on to get a contract signed? How many contracts signed do I need to get these amount of closing to get this average commission to make this much money, right? It doesn't have to be about the money. I mean, it is for me, but because I, I don't really didn't want to do this for my health because I like to travel, okay? I like to travel, I like to do stuff. So I've got the planning stuff. If you'll do that, then it it'll free you'll become free, right? And then how many people work off a, a daily schedule? You have your own daily schedule. This is what I do for my real estate work. If you were working some other sort of job outside of this industry, you would have a schedule whether you liked it or not. I got to get up at this time. I got to drive to work. Once I get to work, I got to start doing these tasks all day. And a couple hours, I get to go. 10 minutes, I get to have a little break. And then I got to go back and I got to do these tasks or whatever they are for another couple hours. Then I get a 30-minute lunch ah! or whatever it happens to be. Then I go back and do some more tasks. And then I get another little break. And then I go home. And when I drive home, then I get home and I, you know, I try to eat me. Or, you know, I hit the door and everybody's yelling at me because they want something, right? Uh, that's what happens. And so you're on a schedule whether you like it or not. So you need a, a strict schedule, right? To get up on the days that I work and you pick how 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 many days are you going to work in a week? How many hours are you going to work? Pick it. Pick it, right? I'm only going to work 20 hours a week. Okay, do that. Pick your days, pick your time. Then then do your schedule. You only have your job. Well, your job as a real estate sales agent only entails four items. So you got to do them every day, and it's boring and repetition. You got to do them every day. Number one, you have to talk to people. Talk to people. That's called prospecting. This is not prospecting. This is lead generation. You're creating something out of nothing. That's why you generate a lead. You're creating something out of nothing. And sometimes you're paying for it. And sometimes they're awesome. If you can be the first person to call that person, right? And I know I've got some agents that are just amazing at this. One that built a career on her Instagram, right? That's not me. And eventually she's got to do other stuff. And she does. And she knows how. So create your schedule. I get up at this time. I do this and this and this. Then at, oh, I forgot to tell you the rest of your job. Talk to people every day. Set an appointment. Go on an appointment. Get a contract signed. Buyer broker agreement. Listing agreement. Real estate purchase contract. I don't care. Get a contract. That's your job every day. Talk to people. Set an appointment. Go on an appointment. Get a contract signed. Oh, I do everything, everything digital now. I don't even need it. Awesome. What's their name and where do they live? Right now, tell me their name and where they live, and I'm going to be over there at their house, and I'm going to steal your list. Right? I am. I'm going to steal your list. I'm going to take your buyers away from you because I'm going to go meet them face to face, and they're going to love me because I'm taking fun. I always have her in the back. I always have her in the back. She's pretty, she's sweet, but she's coming, and people love her, right? I am the fireman. When there's trouble and you got to put a fire out, what? I'm that guy. I'm the fireman. So that's your four things.
So tailor your schedule around it. Of course, you've got to do all the other things. Oh, yeah, I got to follow up with those leads. And, you know, I have to do my admin work, my transaction documents got to go into Scott. You got to do all that stuff, right? So you can time that in. Oh, I do need to check my Facebook. No, you don't. Okay. I knew I, I got tickets. No, you don't. Okay. You do not. I have to check my email. No, you do not. Pick a time. Pick. You can look in the morning and then you can look when you're done. Okay. Oh. Anything else that takes you away from your primary jobs is time wasted. Pick your schedule. Strict schedule. I get up. I go to work. Either I come to my office at the office, go to my home office, do whatever. But I'm start talking to people. And I need to talk to this many people, however it is. Okay, however it is. I don't care how you do it on the telephone, face to face. Well, you got to talk to them somehow. Maybe you got a bunch of leads you generate. Well, call them up, right? Talk to them. I mean, how many times when you get a uh, uh, internet driven lead that you answer them back by text message or email and you never hear from them, they don't call you, they don't want to talk to you, whatever. 52 other agents that have the same person because they're online just filling stuff out and they're looking at, right? How many of the, how many times, how many of those do you actually convert? That's hard work. That's a lot of hard work and it's not very fun. But sometimes you got to do that too. But you got to talk about ex you decide how many contacts. So when I was a younger man and grinding it out, right? I'm a I'm a talk on the telephone guy, right? That's kind of how I learned, and I don't mind it. I don't. I love calling for sale by owners. I'll call them all day if you let me, right? There's enough of them. Oh, there's not that many for sale by owners. Get on Zillow. They all advertise. Every one of the for sale by owners is on Zillow. Right? They all put their phone number in there. Start working your way down the list, right? You don't have to pay for lead stuff. Start calling. I like to call people. So pick how many people you want to talk to as you're prospecting. Start at whatever time. What's too early? I don't know. I know people that start calling people on the telephone at seven in the morning. I mean, that. Uh, that's not, I won't. I'll start at eight, though. Eight's fine, right? Uh, eight's fine. But and I'm not saying you have to, oh, that's cold calling. Well, well, don't cold call that. Call somebody you know, right? I don't have anybody to call. Call your friend. Call somebody and have a conversation about buying and selling real estate. Just have a conversation. Just do that. But pick how many. That, so you have a goal, right? It's not always going to work every day. But I was, my deal was this. 25 contacts minimum. 25 contacts. When you finally really get good at the numbers, you're going to realize if I have this many contacts, I'm going to get an appointment. If I have this many appointments, I know I'm going to get a contract signed, right? And then I'm just got to get it to the finish line, you know, and then I get paid. And then when you really start working those numbers hard, you realize that every con, then it makes you, it helps to incentivize you wanting to make contacts with people. You realize that, ah, oh, this con, for every contact I make, that's worth like five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever, right? So you work the numbers. It's all about the numbers here. It always is. Okay, let's get to the magic words, right? Let's let's get there. They're not hard, and there's a lot of them. And I actually I brought some other stuff. A lot of different coaching. My there's a company called Buy Referral Only, right? My wife was a by referral only coaching client for, for a really, really long time. In fact, yeah, we have all their stuff, but they're really good with words and speaking, whatever. So I brought some stuff that you can use or look at or, you know, get yourself scripted, kids. Just do it. Every, every real professional in any genre is scripted. They are. Every good musician working off a script until they're so good the script's up here, or every athlete working out of a playbook, you know, professional athlete, every great actor had to have a script to get going, even though they make it look so natural because it's internalized. Just get yourself scripted somehow. 
Yeah, I always use my courage grip. People go, oh, they're dumb and they don't work. That's because you don't use them and you don't know how. But there's tons of stuff out there. Write your own then and just start practicing over and over and over and over and over, right? So then when it comes time, you can just have a conversation with somebody about buying and selling real estate. That's what you do. You have conversations about buying and selling. How many strangers do you walk up to every day and have a conversation about buying and selling real estate? If I would have been five minutes earlier and I didn't go to that tour meeting for my wife, I was going to do that before I walked in the door. Uh, people like, sometimes people say, prove it, right? So here's the thing. Start, start today doing that. Start today. Script yourself. You script yourself. You don't want to use somebody. Else. They're out there everywhere. There's, I just saw yesterday. We well, have my famous works every time when I did this many transactions with this script. You know, maybe it's a great one. I don't know. If it works for you, then it's great, right? If it works for you, it's great. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Just do something that works for you. All right. Hey, Terry, this is Tana online. We've had a few people in the chat ask for um, this plan. If you could email it out to them, this script or whatever. My favorite person in the Presidio Pleasant Grove office, Jolynn, is going to help me. So just get, get the names and stuff and we'll okay, send everything. So, send everything. Okay. okay. So everybody online, if you want this, leave um, your information in the chat and we will get it to you. Is that good? Okay. All right. Oh, do you, do you know how long I, I was gonna I was gonna mention how long really that I've known Steve Perry. He was like he was like a guy I used to work with, his mentor. He was like his assistant when he now, now look at him. He's my assistant. Right. Ah, do the very film. <laughs> oh, and if you ever see us fighting, we're not really fighting, but you know, it just seems that way. That's how we communicate sometimes, it's like we're fighting. Yeah, yeah, and I don't care. Yeah. All right, so look, all right, let's go. Let's get let's get to some fun stuff then. Then I only a couple a couple things. This is try this, learn this and try this, learn this and try this. Okay, here's your here's your here's your dialogue right here. Work it works anywhere, and I and I will give you a couple stories to back this up, and then I will give you a challenge. So here's here's your question. Uh, here's what you do. You find somebody you're in the grocery store, and there's not busy, or you know, there's 52 people in line. Don't, but not busy, or you're go to some place, to some other store you go to a lot, or you're in a restaurant, restaurants are awesome. Uh, and as long as it's not a place where the person is like 17 or younger or what, you know, you want to you want to talk to somebody that could actually sign a real estate contract or something, right? So here's what you do. You put on, put on your best friendly smile, because they're always been, Unless you're having a really crappy day, then we're going to smile back. Always. Gosh, people aren't necessarily bad all the time. So they're going to smile, right? They're going to smile. And then they might greet you or say hi, and you'll say hi. And then you're going to smile and say, may I ask you a question? 99.9% .9 of the time, they say yes. They always say yes. And if they say no, then you're done, right? Don't waste any more time. Because you're just you're doing this for three reasons. Number one, it's practice. Getting good at talking to people you don't know and being comfortable with it and knowing what you're going to say. It's the practice. Number two, uh, possibly you could get an actual right now client. That doesn't happen very often, but that's not the point. The point is the practice, really. But you could get a maybe a right now client, or number three, you could get a client down the road. If you do if you do follow up with those folks and are kind and gentle about it. So 
May I ask you a question? Do you own your own? The next, your next thing you say is another question. Do you own your own home? Awesome. That's so wonderful. May I ask you another question? How long has it been that somebody told you or asked you or was able to get you the information? You know, you just phrase this however you want. I'm kind of throwing ideas out for you. How long has it been since you had an idea of what the value of your home would be in today's real estate market? None. Would you like to know? Okay, awesome. So the other thing you're looking for, name, phone number, email. Name, phone number, email. And you're in a hurry. So this has got to go fast, fast, fast. If you don't have 15 minutes, you're at the checkout line. You're at the wherever, wherever right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I can help you with that. My name is Terry Dorsey. I'm a real estate broker with Presidio Real Estate. And I can help you with that. Can I just get your name, phone number, email? Thank you. Okay, and I'll get in touch with you after. What time do you get off work? I mean, I don't want to ever bother you at work. Okay, uh, sometime after five, today or tomorrow, because I'm going to do a lot of market research so you have a good idea. Thank you. Bye. You're out. You're done. That's the grocery store one, right? May I ask you a question? You've got to be kind and polite and loving and friendly. May I ask you a question? Your best cheesy grin. May I ask you a question? May I ask you a question? Yeah, ask you a question, right? And they always say yes. Yeah. I mean, if they don't say yes, yeah, okay, well, next, next, right, move on, next. It's not personal, it's just, you know, you having a conversation. They always say yes. Yeah. Next question is always. I had a class once where somebody was teaching this type of thing. They never went to the next question. I said, what the freak? Get out, why are you teaching this, you know? You ask that question, and then you're supposed to just go, oh, can we develop a relationship right now? So I can put my arm around you and then ask you later on in about two weeks whether you want to buy or sell a house. Your next question is always, do you own your own home? And if they say no, sometimes uh, there's one more question after that. But sometimes when... You say, do you own your own home? They say no. Then all of a sudden, it's and you start spewing it out why they don't own their own home and what's going on. With them. They just do. You don't ask them. They're just, you know, they just regurgitate all this stuff out. But if they kind of just go, no, your next question after that. So we're three questions in, right? Three questions in. So your next question is always, would you like to? Oh, they go, oh, no, I've never. Nobody ever says that. I mean, maybe you'll find somebody. No, but nobody ever says that. No, I don't. Would you like to? Yeah, but you say, hey, listen, my name is Terry Dorsey. I'm a real estate broker with Presidio Real Estate. I think we could put a plan together, even if it takes a long time, that would help you so you could own your own home someday. Would you like that? Well, yeah. Okay, great. This is your name, phone number, email. I'm always, I'm, name, phone number, email. That's what, if I don't do nothing else, I want that, right? And then I can be in charge of whether I follow up with them, I forget about it, I do whatever. Name, email, phone number. But really, you know, you're going to want it. You want their name. You want the email so you can send them stuff if you need to, right? You want their phone number because you want to talk to them. But Name, email, phone number. Oh, oh, that'd be great. Okay, well, let me give you two stories. Two stories. What time is it now? One. We're done. Get out of here. Eight stories. Okay, so look, two stories, we're done. Story number one, okay? So Connie and I used to go to all these conferences and stuff in, in Las Vegas, Mike Berry deals, right? We met a lot of other realtors and other agents. And we had a couple lady friends that we went to you know, go to lunch with sometimes. They each worked at a different kind of, we'd go to lunch. So we learned this kind of thing at one of the deals we were doing. It was a little different than this, but this same basic concept. We learned about it. So we all went to lunch, you know, me, Connie, those two. 
and we're sitting there talking. I said, and we had this uh, lady that was our server, right? Middle-aged gal, probably, you know, supporting herself and a family on that crappy job. That was a decent rent. So, you know, it's, you don't make a ton of money. So I said, oh, okay, who's going to do it? So I threw it out there. Who's going to do it? <laughs> the two women and Connie are sitting there. So I did it, right? So I did it. Because we're getting towards the end, and a lot of my managers are over there kind of like, why are you lingering at that tip? You know, get, get going. So I said, may I ask a question? Yes. Do you own your own home? No. No, I have this kind of credit. Blah, 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 blah. She went on for a little bit, and then you know what she said? But my sister is looking for a house. My sister needs a home. Oh, well, could we get her information? And she said, oh, yeah. I said, you know, your boss over there, why don't you just write it down on the back of the bill or write it right on this card? Write her name, phone number, email down. And she said, okay, sure, I'll do that. And then she goes to the back, you know, whatever. And then she comes back. She's got the information. And I took, you know, and then we said, you know, will you please reach out to her and let her know that one of us is going to call. It's awesome. Awesome realtors that we met, that I met today. They're going to call and see if they can help you with getting a house. Right. And so I live in Utah. Connie and I live in Utah. So we just throw the card down to those two ladies. I don't know what they ever did with it, but I know those two ladies. So I know one, after they had done fighting on it, one of them called her and who knows whether they had. The other story is this. This was really good. So sometimes they make me go on recruiting lunches. Not these guys so much. Not these guys as much, but we're, Steve and I are going to, we'd like to eat, so we're going to probably start doing a few more recruiting lunches, right? So I had to go on this recruiting lunch. Call the guy out, you know, where do you want to go? You pick. And so he picked Red Lobster in Lake. Okay, Red Lobster in Lake. I said, fine, let's go. So I meet the kid there. We're talking, and after about five minutes, I knew he'd never come into our company, and, I, and that was fine with me, right? I was fine with me. Uh, good kid. You know, he, he was working with an agent, kind of a higher producing agent that was feeding him some business and kind of keeping it, you know, paying him a little money to do stuff too. And so, and then he comes in and my wife's this far along pregnant and it was towards the end of the, end of the year anyway. And, and I go, okay, all right, well, great. I've, you know, it's been awesome talking to you. And, you know, maybe, maybe in the future when you're ready to go out on your own, be an independent salesperson, run your own business, great. So I said, and I thought, okay. So at the end, we had this nice young man who was our server. He did very good, very attentive. And, you know, I said, oh, you've done such a great job. Oh, I just love, thank you so much. And, you know, yeah, right? So you've done, done so well. We really appreciate it, right? And so I said, look, watch this. This is going to help you down the road. I said, watch this. And so the kid comes up at the end. And I said, may I ask you a question? He said, oh yeah, sure. I said, do you own your own home? He says, no, but, no, but. I was like the no, but. No, but my fiance and I, we're ready to get out start and we wanna buy a condo right now before we get married and we wanna get all moved in. It's a condo, we wanna have own this condo. We're gonna move in. I said, awesome, that's great. By the way, my name is Terry Dorsey. I'm a real estate broker with XYZ Company because I wasn't here then. XYZ, uh, we'd love to help you out. Uh, can I just get your you know, let, let me get your name, phone number, email? I said I see your manager over there. Don't worry, let's just bring it, write it down, and bring it back to me when we, you know when you bring the bill. So he he goes away, brings it, brings the info back. He says, Oh, I'm so excited. This is great. I haven't talked to anybody. You guys seem awesome, and, uh, right? So me being the magnanimous dummy that I am, right? Want to help out? Want to want to you know work with somebody's feelings? I want to develop a relationship with this other agent. Uh, I the guy kid comes back, hands me the paper, and I looked at the kid and I said, "Do you have a business card?" He talked about our ad. He fight, gets the business card out. He said, "Great, thanks." And then I handed it to the guy. I said, this awesome young man is going to get a hold of you. Here's his card, so you'll know who's calling. And he's going to get a hold of you, right? And so 
lunch is done. He, I give the kid, I give the kid the, you know, the info he wrote out. So here's the guy's name, phone, call him like today, right? But what, you know, he's working this shift. He's going to be off by the evening. So call him today, right? He said, oh, yeah, okay. Well, and I go away and I don't really think anything about it. I feel all good about myself, you know, got this guy in business, you know, I, well, a week goes by and I just, you know, I thought I'd follow up with the kid on how that that went, right? So it's a week. And I thought I'll I'll just follow up. So I call him, hey, how'd it go with that guy we met at Red Lobster? You know, uh, how'd that go? It's like dead silence on the other end of the telephone. Dead silence. Are we are you there? Did we get cut off? Decided. So then I just asked, I said, so you, you didn't you didn't call him, did you? Uh, 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 no. I said, all right, well, give me that information. I'm gonna call him right now. Uh, 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 I can't find that paper. I don't know where it is. Said, okay. Have a nice day. Bye. You're kidding me right now. So true story. This this stuff is so simple. It's so simple. So that's where you start, right? Last thing, so I got stuff. Look, one other thing you could do, and then I'll go away. One other thing you could do besides your business planning, why don't you do a planning with yourself and your significant other, your spouse, your partner, your anybody else that's really close to you? Do this plan. Do the where do I want to be plan. Where do I want to be in one year? Where do I want to be in two, two years? Where do I want to be in three years? Where do I want to be in five years, 10 years? Take some time, put it all down, and then the plan and everything makes it a little, and it doesn't have to be money driven or whatever. It can be some kind of, you know, self fulfillment goal or whatever. So, will you, will you uh, do something for me? So, on mine, and then I'm going to be done. On mine, uh, on mine, one of this right here, open that picture up. Oh, the one? Yeah, open the picture up. This one? Nope. Nope, the one that says TD Minnesota Peru. So look, on my, one of the things on mine was, dang it, I want to go to Machu Picchu someday, right? That was on our, I don't remember what year it was, but it was in the, in the year. So I'm not just shooting you in the breeze on this. That's me, that's honey, that's the sacred mountain, and that's the money shot that you see on TV, right? Or on the pictures or whatever. So do that. But then, here, come back. Don't sit down. <laughs> Don't sit down. Okay. So then, to show you else, there's one that says, right there. This one? Yeah, no, no, up, up, this one? that, that one. So have something big, make them big, whatever they are. So that's us making out by the Great Pyramid. Okay? Yeah. That's us making out by the Great Pyramid. We make out everywhere we go. I'm not that old. Okay, that's it. Try that too. Last thing is this. I'm going you this. Learned it a really long time ago. I actually heard it on TV the other night. Number one, be on time. Be kind. Okay? Be on time, be kind. Listen more, talk less. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Well, I didn't want to get fired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, here's your challenge. You guys ought to all get together. Go to lunch today. Go to lunch today somewhere. Go to yeah. lunch today somewhere and try it. Put me to the test. <laughs> Not McDonald's, not Chick-fil-A. It's got to be someplace you can sit down. Uh, same thing. Like what if 